All right. Hello, everybody. There we go. So uh, last couple of slides, just an example of in uh, real life examples. Uh, the more real life examples I give you, the, the more you will know of the real life equipment existence. So we're going to start with some sort of innocent uh, example here, uh, familiar to everybody. Pretty much, what's the uh, uh, topology on this uh, on with this system as far as the laptop and the printer being connected, and they are connected in a um, star topology, all right? Because the uh, everything home runs, all roads lead to Rome, as they say, or as they used to say, uh, or as they say, you know, or whatever. Uh, so uh, everything comes to the same point now uh as far as inline topology you can connect uh, the equipment as such so the printer and the mm, pc are inline connected in line all right so this one here uh we could have uh, one main printer for everybody to use in the office and this one here, if somebody wants to have their personal printer on their desk as well. So here's the star topology, and here's the inline topology. Let's take a look at another real life example here, inline or chain topology. And as I go along, I'll explain to, uh, I'll explain to you what these uh, pieces of equipment are. This ethernet extender and i think this is we also have seen that uh, in our in-person class but uh, but there's a couple more but might as well just go over this one again so ethernet ethernet the ethernet link uh, we haven't talked about this yet but i will let you in on some secret the ethernet cable as far as copper twisted pair uh, can be no longer uh, than 300 feet or 100 meters uh, something like that uh, so uh, it's actually 328 feet however we gotta allow some uh, you know so we are, when we are terminating a permanent end-to-end -end link so one end is terminated at the patch panel in the communications closet and the other one the field uh, part of the wire is terminated somewhere on the desktop so end-to-end -end, the length of the wire should not exceed 300 feet feet um and uh, the reason for that is if it's any longer, then uh, um, you know, data might, in the simplest way to describe it, would be the data might actually trip over its own feet. So you're going to have some intermittent, intermittent data communication, and that could be annoying or make your work uh, life, make your work uh, miserable. Uh, so, um, yeah, so 300 feet end to end permanent link. So if you allow for some uh, patch cords length from the patch panel to the switch and from the whatever the outlet is in the wall to the PC or whatever other smart devices such as cash register, for example, uh, then uh, you should be able to be within 328 feet. Now, what if it's longer? What if the distance is longer and the speed is not crucial? For example, again, a cash register. A cash register is just sending some data packets with some information uh, of the that have to do with the transactions that have been made. So this is not some kind of high speed video, uh, high quality video uh, signal that we're sending. So we don't have to worry about the speed with that. It doesn't matter when the what if the data from the transaction gets in one millisecond or maybe uh, five milliseconds <laughs> to the uh, to the server. All right, so. Um, um, well, if it's longer, the distance between the patch panel and the actual um, field data jack, then you could use something that is called a Ethernet extender, and it's going to give you more length. As long as this distance here is within 300 feet and this distance here is within 300 feet, you should be fine. Uh, now, it's, it is an active device, which means it has to be powered. There are two ways of powering it up. The best way in this case would be having some sort of an outlet uh, because there could be external power supply transformer, so to speak, the power supply, plug-in power supply, and it could be powered here. 
However, uh, if there is none available, because sometimes it's just that case, uh, no uh, power outlet available, then uh, this Ethernet extender can be powered for uh, by something that's called PoE. And that's going to be the next device. I'm going to power over Ethernet. Okay, that's what the... Uh, that's what the uh, device is called, uh, or the type of port. So some ports, some switches, usually in the most economical uh, versions, they would have the Ethernet ports right here that are designed just to transmit and receive signal for data signal communication. Now, uh, Sometimes the ports will be equipped with something that's called power over Ethernet. So through the Ethernet cable, the signal cable, the data cable, it is going to be sig uh, a signal will travel through that cable. And besides that signal, also some of the pins are going to be equipped with DC power and 48 volts DC is a common one. However, some other voltages are uh, are being used uh, as well. So whenever you're designing system and then whenever you're going to use uh, equipment that is supposed to be working with each other, in this case, you should confirm the specifications of, uh, of the switch and confirm the specifications of whatever device you're plugging in that is going to require the PoE. So this, in this case, you don't have to plug it in anywhere. The, uh, the device is going to be powered by the data cable and uh, the data cable will carry signal as well as power to that, all right? So here is the device, ladies and gentlemen, Ethernet extender, a very common device in modern communications. Let's see what next we have in store. All right, here's the uh, wireless access point in the ceiling, and what do we have here? Let's say we have a working system. Uh, let's say this is part of the network uh, uh, equipment rack. And everything is connected, set up, uh, adjusted, and all that stuff. So, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Uh, no, it's not correct English. So, <clears throat> anyways, uh, uh, in order for us to power up a device um, that requires power over Ethernet. Now, some of the devices, again, they will have an external power, uh, possibility to connect external power with the transformer or the power supply, plug-in power supply. But what if you don't have one around in the ceiling? Okay. Yes, you can call in an electrician so that the, and, uh, the power could be installed for you there, but there is a better way. All right. So... Um, um, we can also use PoE. Now, if this um, switch is not capable of PoE, if, if those data ports are only signal ports, then we could be out of luck, right? Well, there is hope. There is something that's called a PoE, a PoE injector, All right? Well, what do we do? Of course, at the rack location, at the equipment rack, there's going to be all kinds of power usually. Um, and if not, we can make one uh, available to plug in the power for the Ethernet, uh, not the Ethernet, the PoE injector. You could replace the whole switch with another version of one that would have ports that are capable with PoE. But then again, it's a major operation. Uh, things have to be set up and maybe not the same models are available anymore and it turns into a bigger bigger project but you can plug this thing here plug it instead of plugging it straight to the wireless access point which is the wi-fi you can plug the patch cord from the port into the poe injector the poe injector is going to process the signal and act as a repeater both ways but on the other side it's going to provide power on some pins and we're going to talk about which pins they are I'm not going to do that too I'm not going to give you too much truth at once there was that little theater group neo futurists and their motto was too much light can make the baby go blind so I'm trying to not give you too much truth at once but let's get back to the topic plug it in here and plug it in there also over here it 
POE is injected onto the port and voila, here is the device being powered just by plugging just one ethernet, ethernet cable, okay? Another version here, and we haven't seen that slide here. All right, we're going to talk about the VoIP telephone systems um, in uh, the near future. I wonder if it's the next week or the week after that. I think it's, uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> sometimes what happens is that the, uh, the company will try to upgrade their phone system from just a regular proprietary type of a telephone system that uses uh, POTS lines, which is plain old telephone service lines, and in order to save money on the communications and make things look like they are pretty much up to date right now, with all the bells and whistles that come with it, um, then companies switch to VoIP systems, which says voice over IP, which is basically the, e the telephone through internet, we could say that. Right? Uh, now, the telephones are utilizing data jacks. The data jacks are plugged into the regular computer network. Well, it is possible to, because those phones will have an input jack and an output jack. If somebody has already connection and it's up to par as far as the classification of the cable, CAD 5E should be minimum. If not, you should be should pull another wire. But if it's CAD 5E minimum, then you can plug this phone into the network and the phone is going to work as a telephone and then to the throughput jack or the output jack of this uh, telephone, you can plug in the PC and the PC is going to work as it was before. Plus you have the telephone and you don't need to, you don't need to uh, install extra wiring. Smart idea. Okay, so this VoIP telephone is connected in line with the PC. All right, do we have anything more here? Ba -ba -boom. Uh, hmm. Well, these PCs are connected in star topology. Sometimes topologies can be mixed. So these PCs are connected in star topology with the switch and the switch and the router is connected are connected um, in line right? so you can have that uh, da, 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 da. okay takes jumping takes jumping now um just to give you some sort of visual idea and i'm not sure how practical that is anymore however i'm just going to give you the visual because i have to think of some sort of example uh, to give you the differences, to show you the differences between physical topology and signal or logic topology. All right, so consider the PCs uh, 0, 1, and 2. 0 is also something in digital technology, right? Right. All right, so um, <clears throat> um, are these PCs connected to the switch in a ring configuration or is it a star? these PCs. Uh, we just established that physical connection is a star. So physically it looks like it's a star configuration and it is, but can it this, can the system work as a ring? Well, technically, theoretically, philosophically, yes, it can. Right? And if so, then how? Bam, 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 bam. Okay, I'll show you. All right, here is how. Woo. There's a lot of flashing going on here. Consider this is a switch. Kaboom, all right? There it is. We have a switch. And as a reminder uh, from the last uh, class, a switch is pretty much a device that acts as, well, a traffic controller for, the, more or less, a traffic controller for the network. All right. Now we have the PCs. Kaboom, ka -da, da da PCs come in here. Come on, get your PC here. All right. And these guys are connected to the switch in a star configuration. Right? Right. Physically. Right. But can the system work as a ring? Technically. Uh, here. Here you go. <laughs> Arrows and things and objects flying and spinning and twirling. All right. How could it work as a logical topology? It can be a star. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come back, come back. I just pressed the key and I held it. Whoa, I just, 
I just screwed up the joke here. It can be a star or it can be a ring, depending on how the switch is configured inside. So this will be the logic type of topology. Physically, they are connected in the star, but logically, it's possible that they work as a in a ring configuration. Uh, okay, depending on the configuration of the switch, it's a technically it's technically possible, and it would work like this, right? So the signal would go here, and you know, just a, that would be just like a ring topology or a token ring. All right. Um, okay. Lab foundation, let's talk about some of the labs here. This is, let's say terminology, this is a patch panel. All right. What does the patch panel have? It has a bunch of jacks arranged physically in uh, one kind of a strip or a bar. All right. And from there, one to one, the there is a field wiring that connects these ports to the field jacks. And field is pretty much the rest of the building. All right, so patch panel front, and that's what it looks like uh, uh, from the rear. All right, now, here is a jack, RJ45, registered jack, RJ stands for registered jack, RJ45, and the 45 treated as a name. It's an ethernet jack. Now it has prongs at the front and internally right there through a little tiny PCB printed circuit board, it's connected to something that's called IDC. So here is the ethernet RG4, here's RG5, RG45 with the, P, uh, with the prongs through a PCB, it's connected to IDC, oh, there you go. Did you ever watch the Renaissance Man movie? Um, all right, uh, please pound the uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, my camera is not working <laughs> today. Um, okay, so these prongs are connected to one each of those ports, and that's where we bring the individual conductors from the cable and we push them down into knife-like spring-loaded inward connectors. So the connectors bite into the insulation and make connector connection with the copper inside. And that's why it is called insulation displacement connection, uh, IDC. All right. We'll talk about that more. Uh, we're going to this week when we're doing the patch cords, the patch cords are also going to be utilizing something that's called an IDC, but in a slightly different way than the jacks are. Right? Now, those jacks can go in the field, uh, on your desktop, below your desktop, uh, walls, ceilings, and what. That's the field wiring there. So we get individual jacks that can be arranged in face plates. All right now, on the other side, which is the communications room, the, uh, the LAN room, local area network room bunch of patch panels are there because we need to bring them to one point uh, so we're not going to get a bunch of those and get them together hanging in the bundle or uh, in the face plates because that would look just silly all right plus uh, we need to conserve as much space as possible so those here are arranged in a strip like this in order to con uh, construct something that's called a patch panel so these connections, this IDC connections for this jack are arranged at the back of this jack. And for this port, there will be a portion of the back here. So we'll be having the same thing, maybe arranged a little bit differently. And you're going to look at some of the colors and we will take a look at the color code later on. So basically that's the here. So here is the patch panel, front, rear, and here's the ethernet jack, data jack. Now, not sure if you can see this or not. We got two cables here. Uh, the contestant on the left is CAD 5E. Uh, pretty much, probably, it's CAD 5E. And over here, you can say it's probably CAD 6. And it would be a good, those two would be, a, would be good guesses. They use twisted pairs. See, here's a pair and it's twisted. 
Here's a twisted pair. Here's a pair and it's twisted. Here's a pair and it's twisted and so on. We will talk about why those pairs are twisted. There's a reason for them to be twisted. Notice they are twisted at different rate. Okay. Excuse me, I gotta clean my throat. Okay. Uh, so, cut six over here. Not only has pairs that are twisted, but it has a tiny bit of a separator right there. It's a plastic separator. It's like a, in the form of a cross, long kind of cross, like an X. Uh, and each part of that X has its own channel for that pair to be laying in. And this whole thing is twisted around itself. So not only we have twisted pairs, but the pairs are in an organized way twisted around each other as well. So there's a twist, it's a twisted twist. All right, so that's, oh, look, I was right. I know I wrote this thing. Uh, so I'm just giving you some heads up on some of the equipment and things like that are going to be repeated to you. So you retain the information uh, the best you can and you can turn that information into knowledge. Ask me later what the difference is between information and knowledge. Okay, I will tell you now. Information, you wanna bake bread. That's my favorite example. You get the information, you get the bread baking recipe and you follow it. And I almost guarantee you whatever is gonna come out of the oven is not going to be bread. <laughs> then you're going to try things one way, try things the other way, maybe consult some people that da, 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 da. after a few times, you're actually going to have bread coming out of the oven. So before you just had the information how to do it, now you have the knowledge. Okay, but this is not a philosophy class. Uh, ooh. Insulation, displacement, connection. Again, uh, here's the lab foundation. I'm not going to read this thing here. You can read that. Uh, it's a bit of a history. I'm just going to show you basically how the IDC works. All right, so here is a piece of wire. It's insulated. Uh, it's got some jacketing there, uh, insulation jacketing. And here is insulation displacement connector. First, you put that thing on top, the wire on top of this connector, and you use some sort of a pushing device to force that thing in. And these knife looking like connector blades are going to bite into insulate to the insulation and make connection with the copper that is inside. Now there's something wrong with this particular picture right here. And at first I thought I would replace it with something correct. However, I thought maybe I should keep it because that's gonna give me a chance to bring your attention to something that's very important. Usually for, for the most part, uh, when you're doing the data jacks like this, uh, or this sort of, uh, of telephone jacks, or Bix blocks, when we terminate 25 pair, we'll also do that in one of our labs. We should use solid wire, not stranded wire. Why, you might ask? It is because when that insulation displacement happens in those two parts of the connector, right, biting into this, to the, to the core of that conductor, if it's stranded, some of the strands might get damaged in the process and you're not going to have as strong a connection as you should have. So somebody did that wrong. I got this thing from the internet right here. Here's the description. I mean, here's the reference. Um, so probably an honest mistake or something like that, but that gives me a chance to, uh, to show. So this should be only used with, uh, this type of connection should be only used with solid core conductors. The only exception is that when you're making patch cords, which is going to be this week's lab that we actually do, um, if you are from, well, if you're watching this thing years from now, then who knows what lab we're going to do, if you're going to do any. But for the class of 2023, uh, summer, we're going to have that thing this week as we speak. All right, uh, we're going to make a patch cord using the plugs, Ethernet plugs. Okay. Now, hmm, some of the patch cords can be made with solid wire, but they are not as flexible. But in order to 
establish that flexibility of a patch cord because you're moving it about, plugging and unplugging from switch to patch panel or to whatnot. They should be used with stranded. So when you're using that RG45 plug, which is which looks like a bigger telephone plug um, or Ethernet plug, the computer plug. You should know how it looks like. If not, you're going to know this week. If you're using stranded wire, you should order the, con the connectors or the plugs in a stranded configuration. So those little IDC clamping things, those connectors, will have a slightly different shape to accommodate the stranded core conductor. And if you're using uh, solid wire to make patch cords, which we will uh, in our class, then the jacks or the, not the jacks, the plugs um, should have uh, those connectors made to accommodate in a way that accommodates solid core. All right, come on, come on, come on. And that's the uh, last thing that we saw that we we're supposed to see yesterday. Now, let's just... Uh, let me fire up this thing right here, which we're supposed to be doing now. Okay. Computer networks. And uh, we just start with a funny picture. You know, there's some guys sitting on the telephone poles and they have those 10 cans to communicate with. And here's a network of... Wow, it's a network communication, right? Network types. Definition. A computer network is a group of computer systems and other computing hardware devices that are linked together through communication channels. Whoa, to facilitate communication and resource sharing among a wide range of users, networks are commonly categorized based on their characteristics. Okay, network types. LAN, local area network. WAN, wide area network. WLAN, wireless a local area network, metropolitan area network, storage area network, or system area network, server area network, or something like that. Uh, VPN, virtual private network, those things are becoming really popular right now. And here is a picture of a piece of equipment that I have installed way back when, who knows where. Um, <clears throat> now look at some of those lights here. When you bring up, uh, when, when you power up a brand new network, here is the moment of truth, and that's where you get excited. Okay, you flip the switch. All right, so the okay thing here says, yeah, okay. Well, I guess things are okay. <laughs> um, then we're looking for this light when the system is booting up. That means it found internet once the light does what it's supposed to do. And of course, we're going to see some LAN connections. So this would be connected to some switches or maybe some individual smart devices such as PC or printer or whatnot. But most of the time, they probably would be connected to a switch to split the signal into uh, further. Okay? And then after this whole thing, so OK comes up first. Those two comes right. Those those come right away to because uh, you know, there's not much uh, required for them to boot. But then we're going to go, okay, did it find internet? Did it find, oh, bang, the light is on. Oh, yeah, we find internet. And then this light is going to kind of be undecisive. Whether it will come up or not. Here's the VPN. Ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam. Oh, yes, it came up. All right, so we are cooking with gas right now, so to speak. And uh, we know now that uh, the system is online. And we'll talk about what VPN is. All right, local area network. What are we doing? We're doing okay connects a group of computers in close proximity within the same facility or well, a building or a group of buildings. Well, one system is connected on that. One type of business is on one LAN, or maybe one part of the business is connected to a LAN or sub-LAN, and that could be part of a bigger LAN. Okay. 
All right, purpose, sharing resources and services such as files, printers, applications, email, or internet access. All right, excuse me. All right, that's what it looks like. Land, we already seen that picture before. Um, so here is the main land room, local area network room, and in a star configuration, star topology, the smart devices or the nodes or hosts are connected to the uh, to the patch panel or the equipment rack that lives in LAN room, local area network room. Sometimes it's called communications closet. Sometimes it's called server room. All right. One network can consist of multiple LANs working together. For example, in a big firm or company, the networks, the LAN uh, sub -lands, or the LAN can be subdivided into different departments. Like for example, accounting, production plan, or management offices. These different departments can be on different LANs within the same company, uh, just so the data is being shared and routed more efficiently. Yeah. Local area network connects group of computers, da, da, da. Okay, so here I put in red a building or group of buildings. How are we doing that? All right, I just took that picture of, I just took a screenshot of some sort of like a Google Maps uh, thing. I don't know what these buildings are. I don't know where they are. Uh, I just wanted a picture that has two similar buildings together for the purpose of this lecture. Now, Let's pretend that this is one big company that owns these two buildings and here, and this is supposed to be like a tree or something. So there was a bad merger uh, on the picture. All right, so, well, that thing has to be on one land, local air network, but there are two separate buildings. So how do, we, how do we do that? I'm gonna bring your attention to some other real life devices and that's going to happen right now. All right, so we're here, let's see those buildings, just going to expose them. All right, well, in order to connect that LAN uh, to the whole thing to the same LAN or the main LAN or the DMARC point and the DMARC point, which is point of entry for all the signal, it could be in this building or it could be in this building. Right? Let's say it is in this building somewhere here and this will be the secondary LAN. So this will be considered MDF, and this will be considered IDF. MDF stands for main distribution frame. IDF stands for intermediate distribution frame. A terminology, a bit of a terminology, okay? So here's the MDF lives here, but then there's a bunch of computers and stuff here. So we need to get that signal and we need that MDF to handle all the, uh, uh, all the data. So this computer needs, needs to communicate with that computer right there somewhere. They don't need to know that there's a break in the, uh, you know, um, between those two buildings. Well, we could do this by installing an optical fiber under the ground or overhead. Yeah. And in order to do that, here's another terminology. We're going to utilize something that's called media converter. Media converter converts one type of signal, converts a signal from one form to another. And there is no just one media converter fits all. Media converters can serve a different purpose because for example, you have the copper wiring that involves electrical signals to uh, electrical pulses and whatnot to, uh, to serve as a signal and it travels along the copper wires. So it's electricity that's being used, electronics, <coughs> excuse me. So, but here we have optical fiber, which is a piece of glass that the signal travels through in the form of light. So that's why we need media converter that converts the electronic signals into, um, into, the, uh, um, into the light. So this media converter would convert ethernet uh, type of signal copper to fiber type of signal and it would convert back to here so then it will have copper all around okay i got a question here what does i for idf stand for it stands for intermediate okay uh, so mdf and idf now 
uh, homework for you. Go to Home Depot or some sort of other big, large department stores and look around the walls somewhere. You're going to see sort of like black boxes there, the size of a small refrigerator hung on the walls. And you're going to see big letters there saying IDF, A, IDF, B, IDF, C, and so on. These are the intermediate distribution frames servicing all the equipment that uh, well, that, needs, that requires data communication, right? So the copper wires are going from those. It's, they're basically closets, uh, equipment racks mounted on wall-mounted equipment racks. Okay? And those IDF intermediate distribution frames are connected in a star configuration through fiber optics to the main distribution frame, which is the main land room. Okay. Uh, so usually there is only one main distribution frame and bunch of IDFs. So the I stands for intermediate distribution frame as opposed to main distribution frame. All right, so here's a way of doing, dealing with the media converters uh, that convert electricity to light pulses. And we need a media converter here the media converter here, obviously they have to be bi-directional. Right? Or we can do this thing wirelessly. Right? You can have a wireless LAN signal and that's also a very popular thing. The only thing is that it's important that this is line of sight. So you can't have any objects between those because they need to see each other, those two antennas. Um, yeah, very popular thing in some larger companies. Um, in order to handle the whole uh, local area network. We also will need some media converters here. And, but this, in this case, the media converters would convert the electronic signals into radio waves bidirectionally, because the data has to travel this way and that has to travel that way. And the same thing here. So two types of media converters that uh, we're using. Another way of uh, seeing a media converter is uh, sometimes you see those menu boards. If you work at, uh, I don't know, Tim Hortons, Burger King, McDonald's, uh, Wendy's or whatnot, you see those menu boards uh, behind the counter to show the prices of the items and whatnot. Those menu boards also are equipment uh, equipped with something that's called media um, converters, and sometimes they're called media players. Right. So those menu boards or those basically those big monitors are synchronized through the network, so they have a network connection, and um, there is a media player or media converter in each of them, sometimes there used to be external that you would have to mount that onto the back of the monitor. Now the new ones are uh, built into the menu, to the, to, to, the, uh, to the monitor. So there's also, there are also media players or media converters. Okay. All right, LAN, cable structure example. Well, Sometimes you're going to have service calls like that and you just have to see the same elements. It, it's going to be done in a neat way and sometimes not as neat, but excuse me, <clears throat> when the client calls you, you go, you know, do the service, right? And treat it as gold. So um, some of them will look like this. It's just basically a shelf. Where do we have a patch panel here? We don't have a patch panel. Well, we have something like a simulation of a patch panel, multi-port, surface mount boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you got eight ports. And from there, uh, from there, you can see on the bottom here, there is the field wire going to individual PCs or smart devices. Now from that, using patch cords, a little bit messy, and this, the zip tie is not trimmed. Hey, I don't like that. No, sir, I don't like it. Okay, so then they're connected to the switch and the switch is connected to the router gateway modem or whatnot, sometimes to one box here. So it's a simple, the simplest network. Sometimes you're going to have service calls like this in order to, uh, um, to service the client. You just have to know, see the elements. Sometimes you're going to see, well, maybe not as huge, uh, but a smaller version, but a little bit more organized um, data frames like this, distribution frame. Right. That's a huge land room. Right. One thing I'm going to bring your attention to is 
Uh, what do we have here? We have a bunch of equipment and it's all running and it's all using power and it's all producing heat. In fact, if you get one of like, let's say two of those or maybe sometimes even one or maybe, yeah, uh, maybe two, it is capable of producing as much heat as a barbecue running full blast. Now, can you count how many of those? So I just want to bring your attention to something power a lot of power i'm talking a lot of power is needed to power this whole thing up but then again a lot of power is needed for the air conditioning system to cool this place down so it doesn't overheat and if the air condition fails well um the system is going to heat up pretty quickly to the point that it stops working. And a lot of those equip that those pieces of equipment, those switches, routers, or servers, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, are temperature sensitive. They can't overheat over a certain temperature. And if they do, then the warranty is void. Okay? So, uh, and they do have internal thermometers that register the temperature. So consider the power that needs to be done. Okay, I'm gonna press a bunch of switches here. That says basically what, uh, what I said. All right, consider the structured cabling. Look at this. Those trays, those cable trays are empty. Where is the wiring? On the other side? Maybe, maybe not. But there's a lot, of, I can tell you, there's a lot of wires going here. How is this thing being solved? The wiring. Well, ooh, look at the floor in this room. See those tiles? It's just like the ceiling tiles. You could have floor tiles. Of course, they, are, they have to be more rigid because we are walking on it. Uh, what would be the average wattage of such a uh, average wattage? Um, I'm going to use the technical term here: many watts. <laughs> many. That's the. It's, you need a power supply that has many watts. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> uh, all right. For the uh, consumer and the computers, when you reach the critical temperature, they turn off. Would these components do the same? Well, it depends. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, well, yeah, some of them will shut down and some of them will just keep running, depending on how things are set up and how things are made. Eh? All right, so go back. Let's go back to the floor here. See those tiles? See this? Wow. Okay. Right. Raised floor. That's cool. Look at that. I said raised floor, and the whole thing raises. Ooh, that's artsy. Uh, deep man. Okay, so <clears throat> here's something that's called raised floor. There's a stellage being produced here. And on top of that, there are tiles, and you can run cables. Now, that's not a cheap floor, but uh, in many cases, uh, it's being used. Very convenient. Right? Whenever you have to service one of those, you are going to ask for the suction cups, because that's how you can lift those tiles. Don't even try to lift them with your fingernails because you just won't be able to. Those are relatively heavy and rigid because, of course, they have to be. It's a floor. Yeah. All right. Why are you network? WAN joins an unlimited number of smaller networks. What or what could it be? Mm -hmm. Oh, in a way that the devices of different networks can communicate with each other. Whoa, that sounds very familiar. Example, no problem. Bang, that's the internet, wide area network. So when you have a piece of equipment that has a port that is labeled when, so that's where you plug in this port, probably going to plug into a modem, which is connected to the internet, which is bringing the internet to the building. And in case you didn't know what internet looks like, well, that's what it looks like. Okay, now you know. All right, so here, oh, wow, look at this. Uh, da, 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 land. Okay, so here's 
typical consumer type of a box that you would get uh, when you sign up for an internet by whatever company. All right, here's a power, da da da, reset. Eh, sometimes you need it. So now let's look at the ports. You got one, two, three, four orange ports and one gray port. There you go. Those orange ports, for example, in this one here, land one, land two, land three, land four. Into this, you can plug in specific equipment such as PC, wireless access point, um, whatever else. However, this first port is set up so you could plug it into a modem. Now, this box also has a built-in modem, but if you don't want to use that DSL modem, with DSL stands for Digital Subscribers Line, which is basically a phone line carrying the internet signal. So you can use that, but if you don't want to use that, if you don't want to use some other external modem, then you can use this here. You will plug into the first this first port into the modem that goes outside. And the other ones, you can plug in into the individual pieces of equipment, such as PC or printer, or you can plug it into a switch that would give you more ports. So here's the when. This will be your internet connection or you can use DSL in this particular box, as I call it. All right, what do we have? Wireless local air network. Well, as the word wireless suggests, this type of LAN uses wireless network protocols to establish communications between the devices. Is it possible to have a 100% wireless network? You will never have a 100% wireless network. You can almost have it. Wireless is the Wi-Fi. Right? So <clears throat> even at your home, um, you have a wireless router, but the wireless router could be plugged in with a wire to the, uh, to the modem. Right? Yeah, another philosophical kind of look at things. All right, this is what wireless access point looks like. Uh, Cisco is one of the examples. We have a bunch of similar devices uh, all around the school. That's what you, that's where, you, when you're using the Wi Fi from the school, that's where your laptops, cell phones, and whatever smart devices wirelessly you have, they make a connection with that box. Now, the ones that we have, they have. Uh, different lights on it, uh, just one light, and it turns different color. If you can see it green, that means nothing is using this device. If there's one cell phone around it that locks onto it with the password or whatnot, that, that line turns blue. And if the light is flashing, it's probably because something is wrong with this wireless access point, or maybe it's booting up. All right. And here's an example of how wireless access points are being used. Conference rooms, schools, um, fast food places, banks, whatnot, they're used everywhere. Metropolitan area network. Come on. A network spanning a physical area. And here's the definition of spanning, what a spanning is. Larger than land, but smaller than when. Okay, what could it be? It's a, such as a city, all right? So a man is typically owned by and operated by a single entity, such as the government or large corporation. So, you know, city network. Uh, sometimes you can see uh, some kind of weird devices on top of the traffic lights structure. There could be those wireless antennas that are connecting uh, to the, mm, well, to the metropolitan area network and maybe from the city hall or somewhere the logic of the let's say traffic lights is being uh, is being um, controlled okay there's references because i have to wherever i got my information from sand system area network links different um, clusters and whatnot okay. I think we're going to stop at this thing. I'm just going to explain this to you. Um, I'll give you an example. Let's say there is a large, huge corporation, and they have their main building where all their main equipment lives. So in that main server, there is 
pretty much all the data that the company uses. It could be the employees' records. It could be their financial information. The whole, the whole life of the company could be on that one server. Well, what is a fire or flood or tornado that happens? And let's say the company employs 20,000 people. So if that building is wiped out or burns, all of that, so the company will be done. Right. So what happens is if the company has different buildings or maybe it can rent some spaces, but if it's a huge company like that, it would have different branches all over the place. They would have server rooms in all those buildings and part of the equipment that lives in the server room could be dedicated as a part of the system area network. So whatever the main frame stores, as far as all the livelihood of the company, all the information, it could be copied into many different systems. So if something happens to one building, you get a whole copy of everything somewhere else in another building. So system area network or storage area network, same. Now we have some more slides and we're going to take a look uh, at those. Uh, we, we always seem to be going with a bit of a slide, but I just don't want to rush through those slides, right? And um, I want to give you as much information as possible. Okay, I'll see some of you guys. Uh, do I have all of you? Yeah, I got all the sections this time. So I see all of you this week um, during the labs. All right, thank you very much, guys, and see you when I see you. Bye. All right.